Hi guys, my name is Saikat Ji. I'm from Kolkata, India, and I'm going to pursue my master's in computer science at the University of Texas at Dallas. So this is my first video, and today I'm going to talk about how I got my F1 student visa approved after being refused earlier. Yes, you heard me right. I got denied at the Kolkata consulate first time under section 214B. I reapplied again in a couple of weeks, same consulate, and got my student visa approved next time. So I'm not going to talk much about my interview experience or the questions I faced uh, because you'll find plenty of them already in the internet. Honestly, all this interview experience can only help you to prepare a super set of questions that you might face or it might give you a brief idea what are the approved answers and what might lead you to a rejection. But at the end of the day, that's their story, that's their situation. Every student is unique. So what's your story? And trust me on this, the first and the foremost thing of a visa interview is that you answer honestly. Whatever information you provide, that has to be 100% authentic and you must not lie. Because if you get caught, the chances of getting your visa approved might be gone forever. See, if your visa gets denied due to lack of funds or say lack of uh, strong ties to your home country, well, these things can be improved and you can address them better in your next attempts. Uh, but dishonesty is something that the visa officers do not entertain at all and you might not be able to convince them ever again that you were a trustworthy person. So be very careful about it. So today uh, I'm going to talk about what is the US visa law, what are the student visa requirements that would help you to understand what are the visa officers expectation from you so that you can build your answers accordingly, answers uh, which are honest, informative relevant and doesn't have that much loopholes so let's get started so we'll start with the visa law so what does the u.s visa law states it states that every student who is applying for a f1 student visa must be considered as a potential immigrant unless proven otherwise so what does it mean so it means that whenever you're appearing for your interview at the time you enter that counter the visa officer starts seeing you as a potential immigrant who is trying to you know, enter the United States uh, with an excuse of studies and you might settle down there permanently, which they do not want obviously. So the default decision is a rejection. Now it's your responsibility how you are going to convince the visa officer that no, you are not a potential immigrant. The only purpose of you visiting the United States is studies only and once your coursework is over, you are going to come back and pursue your career here in your home country. Now this last part is very, very important pursue career here in your home country. See, this has to be the tone of your whole interview. You must convince the officer that you are visiting US temporarily and you are going to come back once your degree is over. And how you are going to convince them about it? Well, you need to address three aspects, purpose, intent, and ties. So we are going to cover each one of them in detail now. So the first thing is purpose. Why do you want to go to United States? The reason has to be studies, and studies only, nothing else. Getting a job in US, settling down there, starting a business of your own there, no, you are not welcome. So questions that might uh, fall in this category are like, why do you want to go to US? Why have you chosen this particular university, etc., etc. So you should start your answers explaining what you have done in your home country till now, what courses you have taken, what degrees you have completed, and what have you been doing since your last degree. So if you are a working professional, you should explain what made you decide that you should quit your job here and look for higher studies. And should also explain how these higher studies is going to help you to advance your career here in your home country. Similarly, if you are a recent pass out or you are going to pass out from your college sometime soon, uh, you should expect questions like, why have you chosen a US university over some good university or their coursework? Well, you can emphasize on the benefits of the US education system, uh, like the courses uh, they offer, they are really well designed, advanced, industry oriented, they have great professors, great labs. These are fine, but make sure that you restrict your fondness to the US education system only. Don't start talking about they have a great market, abundance of job opportunities, uh, better career growth, you are not supposed to say all this and you will be dejected straight away. So be very careful. Remember, you have to come back to your home country and you have to pursue your career here. So this sets the tone 
for the next portion which is intent so in the intent portion the interviewer might ask you uh, about what are your future plans what are you going to do once your degree is over so since you have already you know, mentioned that you are going to come back here in your home country so in this, uh, this part you should make your intent clear to the visa officer tell them what are your exact plans what are you uh, how you are going to pursue your career once you come back uh, so for example if you are going to join back your previous employer tell the visa officer that i have informed my previous employer about my uh, aspirations of higher studies and they have given me a noc a no objection and uh, once i come back here after my degree they are going to give back my job maybe in a higher position or better role obviously so that is one of the safest answer to convince the visa officer and another safe answer is if you have a family business here and you want to come back here and join them once your degree is over uh, but in that case you should be able to explain how this foreign uh, degree is going to help you grow in your uh, family business so whatever may be your answers you must make your intent clear to the visa officer and you must emphasize on the fact that why do you think you have a better career potential here in your home country compared to us uh, for example i said that us has already been a top industry for years now so slowly it's reaching towards a saturation point uh, while markets like india has just started growing so they have better potential to offer in coming days so i'd like to cash it on so moral of the story is you must convince the visa officer that you have a better career prospect here in your home country and now i'd like to talk about the third but the most important aspect of them all ties so what are ties ties are those reasons which will force you to leave us and come back to your home country once your study is over so they can be of different types like uh, financial ties professional ties for example your parents have a running business here in your home country you have your own house the whole family is well settled here well rooted and then there can be social ties like you have been part of some organization let's say an ngo and you have taken a temporary leave from them to pursue your career goals and once that part is achieved you are going to come back here you are going to join them and continue the good work you are doing for the society and then there are family ties very important for indians like us so if you are only son and daughter of your parents let the visa officer know that you are going to come back here and take care of your parents once your studies over so these are your ties and you need to address them clearly during your interview but unfortunately the visa officer is not going to ask you directly about your ties you cannot expect direct questions like what are your ties do you have any reasons of coming back no that is not going to happen so how you are going to address your ties well you need to leave clues of your ties in between your other answers so i'm going to give you an example shortly to show you how you should actually do it but before that i'd like to talk little bit about my own interview experience what went wrong in my first attempt what are the mistakes that i did and how you can actually overcome it so the first mistake that i did was negative body language low confidence nervousness which is very common among the foreign visa applicants who appear for a visa interview see if you are not confident from outside if your body language is down you are not maintaining eye contact you are looking here and there while answering even if you are giving honest answers the visa officer might start doubting you too why this person is so nervous is he or she hiding something is there something fishy about his or her intent so this type of doubts surely not going to help you to get the decision in your favor see being nervous is fine but being refused sucks remember how much effort you have put after your us dream you have prepared for months got good scores applied to great universities got admits from them and suddenly you cannot let your nervousness ruin everything for you in the very last moment so my suggestion is do not take it like a serious interview see this is not a job interview there are no right or wrong answers these are your answers and you have to make them sound convincing so you can think of it like you are a businessman who is looking to start your own business and you are going to meet an investor so you need to look energetic sound confident you should pitch your idea smartly and you should convince the investor why you are the best person to do business with why he or she should accept your proposal so that can really help you to ease out and make you sound confident and convincing throughout the interview which is very important and my second mistake was not putting all the relevant information in front of the visa officer see the visa officer has only 5 or 6 minutes time in their hand per candidate and within this short time they need to listen to your answers understand your case and cast their decision so even if you have come prepared with 
10 to 15 questions. You might face only 5 or 6 of them. And now it's your responsibility how you're going to put up all the relevant information in front of the officer that would convince them to give the decision in your favor. So work on your answers. Try to make them concise, to the point, keep what is relevant and discard the irrelevant information that might contain loopholes. And then the third and the major mistake that I did was not establishing strong ties to my home country. See, this is really, really important. Remember, the visa officer is not going to ask you directly about your ties. So let me give you an example from both my attempts and you will have a clear idea how you should address your ties. So the question I was asked was, who is going to finance your studies? This is how I answered in my first attempt. So I've received a scholarship from the university, which enables me to pay the institution fees. So that's a 50% waiver. And for the rest, I've taken an education loan of this much amount from this bank. So that will be more than good enough to cover the expenses. And what was the interest rate of the loan? Oh, the interest rate is this much percent annually. And is the loan collateral or non-collateral? Uh, no, it's a non-collateral loan. Sorry, we cannot approve your visa this time. And that's it. So what was wrong in that answer? Getting a uh, scholarship is a good thing, right? Having an education loan is also fine. See, nobody has 40, 50 lakhs in their savings account. So what people generally do, they make investment. They invest on properties, FDs, shares, mutual funds, and they show this investment and assets to the bank and avail an education loan easily. So there's nothing wrong in that. But now let me tell you the answer that I gave in my second uh, attempt, and you will have a clear idea what was the difference and what went wrong in the first attempt. So this is the answer from my second attempt. So my father is going to finance my studies. He runs a business of XYZ industry for last 20 years with an annual turnover of this much amount. And we have assets worth rupees this much amount. And based on my credentials, the university has also offered me a scholarship, which enables me to pay the in-state tuition fees. So that's a 50% waiver. And on top of that, I have also a pre-approved education loan of this much amount from this bank, which sums up the total available funding to this much amount, which will be more than good enough to cover the two years expenses. So can you spot the difference now? So what was missing in the first answer? Ties. So when the visa officer is asking about your finances, he or she is looking for your financial ties. So you should start your answers explaining what are your financial ties? What does your parents do here? How much do they earn annually? How much assets do you have? And then you can jump to other portions like scholarships or education loan if you have taken any. So this order is very much important and you must answer the question in this order. You should start your answers with your own financial ties and then you can move to other sections. So I've covered almost everything that I had in my mind. But before I end this video, I'd like to talk about a couple of myths which are very common among the F1 visa applicants and which needs to be debunked. So the first myth is making your paperwork or your documents foolproof is the only way to get your F1 visa approved. Well, if you check the US Travel Docs website, it's clearly written that the visa interview is not a document-oriented process. So the only documents which are required for your visa interview are your passport and your I-20. So, and rest are optional. It is definitely recommended that you carry all your legit supporting documents with you because that might give you some sort of confidence. But at the end of the day, the visa interviewer has only five or six minutes in their hand. So it's not possible for them to go through your documents. So whatever decision they are going to make that is purely going to be based on your visa application form that you have filled, that is your DS-160, and obviously the answers that you provide in your face-to-face -face interview. So that's why it's really important that you emphasize on your answers. Those are the keys. So try to make them foolproof, concrete, keep what is relevant, do not talk much, do not talk less, find the right balance, and address the three aspects, purpose, intent, and ties clearly during your interview. And the second myth is for those who have already got their visa denied once. I know what you guys are doing right now, surfing the internet day and night, digging all the possible resources to figure out whether your last failed attempt will have any impact on your future attempts or not. Well, I did the same thing, and trust me, in the internet, you are going to find mostly the negative comments, like it is surely going to hamper your chances, you will not get any fair or equal chance next time. Well, that is not true. Well, you have to understand one thing. The visa officers or the consulate doesn't have any enmity with you or any grudges against you. They don't know you. So they are just doing their work and they are making a decision based on your case and the answers you provide. So even if you decide to reapply, your application will be considered as a fresh one and you will have a fair chance. Only this time you could expect extra questions like, why did you reapply? What changes you have made to your application? What went wrong last time? So you need to be prepared to address these questions. And also this time, 
you can expect less questions. The interview might be of shorter duration because the interviewer will already have so much information about you from your last attempts. So they might want to focus only on the fishy area where you messed it up last time. So it's really important for you to figure out what is the fishy area. Try to figure out what were the questions you were asked last time, what were your answers and what might have probably gone wrong. So if you have identified the problem area, then it becomes really easy for you to work on that and make it convincing. So if you make your answers foolproof this time, surely you'll have a fair and equal chance. So that's it from my side guys. I hope you find this video helpful and informative and I'd like to wish you all the very best for your future and your F1 visa interview. I hope you get your visa approved. All the very best and good luck.